Hi again. I'd like to continue talking about JavaScript and um, and jQuery. And uh, for right now, let's let's talk about um, you know the code that we have here and get a little more in detail on the actual JavaScript behind it. Now, realize that jQuery isn't anything special. It's just a bunch of code written in JavaScript. Um, like someone else has written it, so you know we don't have to. But it's it's just written in regular JavaScript. And these these calls we're making with the dollar sign here, these are just really, you know, uh, just regular JavaScript. There's nothing special. We're calling you know a function that has been defined somewhere in the the jQuery library that's you know named with the dollar sign. You know, like function named dollar sign you know I mean that looks a little weird but that's you know they do the dollar sign just to make it you know easy to uh, to type right and to make it short um, right so you know how does that regular JavaScript work because you know we can mix the regular JavaScript in here with our jQuery stuff you know for example like this you know defining a variable with the keyword var and calling event prevent default that's just regular JavaScript, nothing even to do with jQuery, right? So how does that work? So let, let's talk about functions for a minute, okay? So how do you define your own functions in JavaScript, okay? And, and why would you want to define a function, okay? Well, a function in JavaScript looks like this. You say function, followed with the name of your function, the parentheses, and the curly brackets. Okay, so there is a function definition. Okay, this is the identifier for the function. It's the name that the function will use. Okay, the parentheses contain any parameters that the function will receive, and the curly brackets are called the code block, and this is the block of code that this function will execute. So let's arrange it like this. We'll, we'll leave the parameters out for now, and we'll put the you know, we'll just, you know, put some code in the code block to test. So if I type something into the code block, you know, for example, um, maybe I want to print a message here in, you know, in the H1, which in our case was called title. And maybe we'll print foo bar, right? And you'll see when I reload the page, you know, I don't see any foo bar in there, right? Well, the function here doesn't do anything until you invoke it, okay? So to invoke the function, you'll call the name of the function like this, followed with the parentheses, okay? So it's got to have the parentheses after it. Okay, so, so what's happening here? Well, we've defined a function, and then below it, we've invoked that function by saying its name. Okay, and there it is, right? Now, why is that, is that useful? Well, because we can invoke this block of code any number of times now without having to write it again and again. Let's take a look. So far, you know, on our page, we're calling on you know, dollar sign title dot HTML with some value in three places. We're using it here. We're doing the same thing again here, you know, different value there. And then we're doing it again down here with a, a different value, but it's the same, you know, essentially the same line of code. Okay. So how can we how can we you know use this function to our our advantage here? Okay, so anytime you're you're typing code more than once, you're creating problems for yourself. You know maybe not problems right in that moment, but you're creating a future problem. Okay, you know for example, if I wanted to change you know the the ID name for for title up here, then I would have to change it in three locations in order for my script to still function. Okay, by using a function here and putting the code inside a function, we could set up our script where <clears throat> this, you know, call to title and setting the HTML of title would only happen in one place, right? So we would not be duplicating the code. And then when we needed to make the change, we could just change it in one place, okay? And if there was a lot of code inside this, 
code block that we were using, then you know it would save us a lot more time, right? And this also makes our programs more, um, you know, um, more reliable, right? So you know if we you know, if we have a lot of code that's written more than once in several different places, it's possible that we might, you know, write it in one place a little different than we wrote it somewhere else, and then maybe our code is a little bit unpredictable. It doesn't always do what we expect it to do. Where if we keep the code in one place, then the code is shorter, there's less of it, and it's more reliable because, you know, we're reusing the same block every time. So we know that that's always going to be the same and do the same things. Okay, so how can we do this here? In order for this to work, you know, really well for us, we have to understand parameters. So what are parameters? And, we, you know, we used parameters here with these functions in click and submit, right? So a parameter is a variable that you can define inside of the parentheses here. And maybe I'll, I'll make a variable here called message. And this variable can store a value right so it'll get a value when we call on the function and what we can do is we can print the message variable in here into the HTML for whatever you know whatever title we want to set right so whatever the value is inside this variable right it's going to get printed inside the title so where does this thing get its value well when you call on the function you can type the value in here and then that will be the value assigned to the variable. So if I say, you know, um, eat apples like this, then the value for message will be the string eat apples. And then when we set the text or the HTML of the title tag, then, you know, the message will be eat apples. Let's take a look. Oh, there we go. Eat apples, right? Okay. <clears throat> okay, so so now that we've got our, our my function here with this message, and we're setting a default message here. How can we use that down here in the click and the submit function? Well, why don't we um, delete the text here, and then we'll say my function parentheses and then we'll put a new message here our message before was hello world right we'll add it with the exclamation point now and then down here inside the submit function we'll call my function and this time we'll call it with the value in the variable text input okay and then uh, We'll save that. And then we'll refresh. And so we see eat apples here. And if I click hello, it says hello world with the exclamation point. And if I type something into the field here, like foo bar, and I hit submit, then it takes the foo bar and prints it into the, the text there for the H1. Okay, so, so that's, you know, that kind of shows us how we uh, work with functions and it also shows us a little bit on how we um, how we refactor our code so refactoring is you know rewriting the code so it essentially does the same thing but it's you know better organized right so just one more thing when you define a function um, you know again it doesn't do anything until you invoke it by calling the um, the function by name now, when we load this page, it immediately says eat apples, and that's because I'm invoking the function here inside the script tag, right? So as the script tag is read, you know, it defines this function, and then it calls on the function here, right? So that immediately invokes the code in the code block. And then in these two cases, we're defining two events, click and submit, and these events are contained in functions that aren't activated until you either click the click me link or submit my form. Okay, so these like, you know, we have the code here, but this code isn't executed until you click. And this code here isn't executed until you submit the form. 
So that's why this one goes off immediately. And sometimes you'll want to do that. You'll want to have a function and you'll want to immediately execute it and you know, do it right when the page loads. And so we can do that by putting a call to the function, you know, just inside the script tag, okay? And then we can defer or call our function later on by embedding its function call into, a, you know, another function or an event handler, okay? So let's, let's save that, and then uh, we'll call this a wrap for this short lesson, and then I hope that's useful to anybody, um, and thanks for watching.